Hi, I'm Ralph, and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making a puff pastry pot pie. In particular, a rotisserie chicken puff pastry pot pie. Uh, now the, the recipe down below is calling for chicken in the recipe, but it's calling for raw chicken. We are going to save a step, and I encourage you to do the same thing. Because if you go out and buy a whole chicken or chicken breast, now you got to bring them home, you have to cook them. You're talking probably another hour's worth of time just getting the chicken ready to go into the recipe. My recommendation is go to some place like Costco or Sam's Club or your local grocery store where they sell rotisserie chickens. They normally sell them for cheaper than what you can buy the whole chicken and cook it yourself. So go for it. It's already seasoned, it's cooked. All you have to do is get the meat off the bone. Now, something else about this recipe that's really great is that it lends itself to leftovers. Just like we're gonna be taking the meat off the rotisserie chicken bones, let's say the holidays come around and you've got a turkey, leftover turkey, and you're wondering what to do with it. This works great for turkey pot pie. Maybe you have roast beef or steak. If you have enough of it left over, just substitute beef broth instead of the chicken broth that we're gonna be using in the recipe and make a beef pot pie. This is a very you know, useful recipe for multiple types of meats. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. But first, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Second, there's a couple of different types of people in the world, people like me, who like a crust on the bottom of their pot pies. If I don't have a crust in the bottom of my pot pie, I feel cheated. My wife, on the other hand, she grew up with only a crust on the top. She does not care for the crust on the bottom. So I'm going to be making two pot pies today. One for now, one for later. Sooner or later, we'll both be happy. But if you have a large family, you only want to do one meal. This will also work if you use one of those 9 by 12 rectang rectangular baking pans. So with that said, I also encourage you to get the pre-made crust already in a pan or just get the dough that will go into one of your pans. It's so easy, saves you a lot of time. Again, you're not having to cook the chicken, you're not having to make the dough. Save a little bit of time. With that said, I'm gonna move over here. We're gonna get started. We're going to be dropping in several of these ingredients. Um, so let's start out by putting in onions. Now I already have butter in the pan. We're gonna be sauteing these onions. Now I'm not a real big fan of onions normally, but if you brown them up, you wind up getting a nice caramelization on them. Let's go ahead and put in some of the ingredients. I am putting in one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper. I'm putting in a quarter teaspoon of thyme and a quarter teaspoon of sage. And we're just gonna work this in over the next several minutes. Okay, the onions are looking nice and caramelized now. I'm gonna be adding just a little bit here of the, uh, the, the chicken broth. We have a cup and three quarters of chicken broth. Gonna bring that back up to a high heat. We're also going to be adding a half cup of heavy cream. I'm using heavy cream even though it says half and half in the recipe because I prefer heavy cream. In order to have an equivalent of heavy cream to half and half, instead of a full cup of uh, heavy cream, I started out with a three quarters cup of heavy cream and added a quarter cup of water. Then I took some off for later which left me with a half 
Now, why would I do that using heavy whipping cream instead of half and half? Carbs. Heavy whipping cream has way less carbs than half and half or whole milk or even 2%. Now, yes, it has more fat, but it doesn't have the sugars. It will typically have one gram or less of sugars. And if you don't have the sugar in there, the fat doesn't react the same way. So it actually becomes a healthier you know, meal for you, believe it or not. Now I'm gonna add high heat to this because in a moment, when this comes back up to a boil, I'm gonna be adding up to a half a cup of flour. Now, when we do that, we're gonna to wanna to blend it in. You don't wanna to just toss it in because then you're gonna get big lumps of flour. And instead, you want the flour to react to the, the heated liquid and it's going to expand. But it's not gonna expand if you dump it all in at once. But first, we have to bring it up to a boil. We've got it up to an, a boil, so now it's time to start adding in the flour. Just a little bit at a time. This is gonna thicken up our mixture here. Make sure all the, the clots are busted up. As you can see, it's already starting to thicken up a little bit. A key thing to remember is you have to be constantly stirring it at this point. Almost done with the flour. It's all thickened up pretty nicely. It is boiling, it is hot. So now I'm about to Add something cold in there. We have one package of frozen vegetables. Now it's a 10 ounce package of frozen vegetables, mixed vegetables. And it is time to add the chicken. Got four cups of chicken here. Now, a great thing about using the rotisserie chicken is, besides, you know, the, the quickness of the deal here, is that with the whole chicken, you're getting both the light and the dark meat. Whereas if you're just doing the, the chicken breast, all you're getting is the white meat. And there's a lot of people out there, including my wife especially, who love the dark meat of a chicken. It does tend to be the juicier part of the chicken. It maintains that, that moisture better than the white meat does. Which is why when you use white meat, white meat chicken in a recipe, sometimes it'll tend to dry out very easily. We will not have that problem here because we are going to have both. And one last ingredient here. One tablespoon of lemon juice. that good mixed in bring it back up to boiling temperature although at this thickness it's going to be harder to see it actually boiling but the the heat will still be there we're getting this fully cooked before we bake it and fully mixed up this is taking on a very good texture here get that meat well distributed throughout That's it. Now, we're moving on to the next phase. Putting it into the, the pies and putting the crust on top. So I'll join you over there by the pie pans in just a moment. Hi, we're back. It's time to put all the ingredients into the pies. This is the fun part. Now, earlier, I made the 
lattice work for this one out of the puff pastry. You kind of see it here. Then I put it into the, the freezer for a while just before I started doing the, the main cooking over here. So it doesn't have to be in there for very long to firm up. That way it's easier to work with at this stage. So we're just gonna put that right on top of our pie here. That one's set. This one, ooh, this is gonna be a little trickier. Looks like it, nope, it's not cracking. Very good, okay. Here's my wife's. Get it firm down in there. Now, here is the rest of the heavy cream mixed in with one egg yolk. We're gonna use that to brush it onto the, the puff pastry. It's gonna help it kinda of brown up nicely in the oven. It can also be used to kind of act as the glue to kinda of hold some of these embellishments on. As it's baking, it'll kinda of activate like glue does and stick it to the crust more. I was getting kind of creative here with my, my dough. Essentially, I was playing with my food. Okay, there you have it. I'm guilty. Make sure everything is nicely coated here. Put some underneath that star to make sure it sticks on. When I cut these, I cut those into like, basically about one inch approximately strips and just kind of weave them together. Now they're ready to go into the oven. But before that, they probably are going to overflow a little bit in the oven. So make sure you put them on cookie sheets. I can just by guarantee they are gonna overflow. Try to get them more in the middle rack because if they're too close to the top, they're gonna brown up too much. Now we're gonna cook them for about 40 minutes to 55 minutes, depending on how your oven is, is set as far as temperature wise and what level, what rack in the oven you put them on. So roughly, Set your timer for about 40 minutes, come back and check on it and see if it needs a little extra time. But in the meantime, I'm gonna set this for 40 minutes and we will be back shortly. Hi, welcome back. The fresh out of the oven. They've just been sitting for a couple of moments here so I can uh, get to be able to, to handle them a little bit. Let me show you what we've got. Here's the one that has both the bottom and the top crust. Here is the one that only has a top crust. These are gonna be good eating, I guarantee you. So if you like the video, press like down below. The description is down below for the recipe and how to make it. And I really would appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you're interested in more recipes or videos, check out my website ralphknowsfood.com. So with that, I will see you all next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.